<laughs> we are the weirdos, mister. Hope you don't mind if I have a little bre brekkie while I, whilst I eat, but because if you are a fan of shits and gigs, which I was, the way I never knew their names until yesterday, listen, I, I don't, I still don't know which is which. Like somebody has explained it one time. I just didn't care because I was like, I don't, because I don't, I don't really watch them. Um, I don't really watch them. I just listen to them. And the thing is, when I saw them and the way that they spot, they spoke, I knew, I knew that they weren't into black women. I was fine with that because you can have whatever preference you want. I, I was never mad about it because I was just like, that's fine because they weren't on the, uh, on Beyonce's internet denigrating and de degrading. There we go. Black women. I was like, that's fine. You don't have to be in black women. It's fine. It was very easy to tell pretty early that they weren't into black women. They're British black men. Like <laughs> I have seen enough of the, of reality shows with British black men. I'm aware just, just like American ones. You know what I mean? I'm aware. We, we all know we're not stupid. Um, <laughs> I watched this podcast that, they, that fucked them up. Was some man named Andrew Schultz. And to me, the thing that I find most interesting is even just by looking at the thumbnail, I was kind of concerned because I was like, this man doesn't look like he likes black people. Like he's got one of them proud boy haircuts. What's going on here? And within, I feel like maybe, I feel like between 15 and 30 minutes of the podcast, because at first I really wasn't listening, but I feel like within 15 to 15 to 30 minutes, I was like, Ooh, I'm not going to listen to this anymore because I feel like it's going to make me not like Fuhad and James. I knew that because you can listen to them on MTV, uh, not MTV. Why am I saying MTV? You can listen to them on YouTube and it has their face in it. And I normally don't have any problems with most of their collaborations. When they go on other people's podcasts, it's fun. When I was watching it or listening to it, I knew immediately, I was like, oop, don't, uh, as soon as it started getting, like it started making a weird left turn kind of early for me. And I was like, oop, let me just not watch this. And let me, let me stop listening to it. Cause it's going to make me not like James and Fuhad. Lo and behold, the internet does what the internet does. And it brought it to me any damn way. Um, <laughs> and there's people talking about this and I just first want to show y'all, hold on, but I'm going to start showing you what the fuck happened here. Cause they were on this podcast with a man who clearly doesn't look like he likes black people. So here we go. So you're Trini. Yeah. Oh, and the white side is what? Irish is Irish. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. Oh, in today's comment, you're a colonizer right now. But, yeah, right, but it's really game, not bro. fair because the Irish got fucked too. Yeah, you're you're like you're double slaved. You're double slaved. Double slaved. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, it sounds uh, like uh, it sounds. Uh, Insane. Hey, it does sound insane, yeah. but it is mathematically true. Though, if we're just mathematically speaking, yeah. Yeah. potatoes. It's potato slaves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I just want you to know, I feel like that's where I stopped. Because this man yelled out double slaved, and I was like, oop, that's enough for me. And I left. Like, I was gone before. Like, I was like, the fuck? And I feel like that's when my ears perked up to what was happening. Because I was like, I don't think I like this man, but, you know, I'll support Fuhad and James because. They're my guys. And again, because I feel like if this makes its way to YouTube somehow, I say somehow like I'm not just going <laughs> to edit it. <laughs> but the issue is not like whether or not you're comfortable. Like a, a lot of the things is, you know, oh, well, I can see that this is the people accepting the apologies are like, oh, and we'll get into the apology in a second. But they're like, oh, I could see you were uncomfortable. I'm like, there's two of y'all. Y'all can leave. I just, there's two of y'all. Y'all can just leave. Like nobody was forcing y'all to sit there. I'm so sorry. But if I was sitting down with a man who looked like that, who just told me I was double slaved, I'm getting up and I'm leaving. There's no reason for me to stay. I'm not going to laugh uncomfortably because at this point I've been laughing 
uncomfortably for a while. And somebody even said canceled two months later is crazy work. Here's why everybody doesn't always go and check out these podcasts. And I, I have the sinking sus suspicion that many people, black women and femmes specifically who listen to Fuhad and James were like, they caught wind early that this was weird or they saw that white man and we're just like i'm not gonna listen to that <laughs> you just had it in your spirit where you're like i'm not gonna go listen to that shit because we wanted to continue to enjoy ourselves i wanted to continue to kiki <laughs> and have a nice time oh he they're getting dragged up and downtown and the thing is, like, their apology didn't even do anything. I'm not really going to show all this stuff because who cares? Like, not who cares, but there's other people who did better videos on it than I did. And I just wanted to drive home again that the issue is not that you don't like black women. Who cares if you don't want to date black women? The issue is that you sat there and let a white man, a racist white one at that, who called you double slaved, To your face. There's literally no way that I'm going to sit there and, and just let somebody call me this shit. Like, and it, it keeps getting worse. I feel like this might be the one that we can watch. What is the black girlfriend effect? This is oh, you, you know, know just blow up the other culture. Yeah, so you'll see a, a, a guy who's had a black girlfriend. All of a sudden, he's got buzz cut, like, yeah. clean shape up. Nah, he's nah, yeah. 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 yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> they yeah. shave their hair because they start losing it. Because it's so stressed being around this black girl complaining about shit all the fucking time. That's why they got to shave their nah, hair. Nah, bro. White guys with black girlfriends, they, they, they grow a beard they because there's up. more cushion when they get slapped the fuck out of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I think, I think the black girlfriend effect, hmm, it might be a protective instinct, bro. You think? Protective. Yeah. Do you guys, do you guys, have you ever had black girlfriends? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, have you ever had white girls? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. What's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> we love them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Just, really? We love them all. Yeah. That means white. Who no. <laughs> and here's the thing. I can tell that they are uncomfortable. But I'm sitting here the whole time being like, there are two of y'all. Get the fuck up and leave. It's very weird of you to just keep sitting there being, because listen, I can understand if it was just like one of them by themselves feeling awkward, but like there's both of y'all. Like get the fuck up and go. Who cares if you leave? Like your reputation would be so much better if you'd gotten the fuck up and just been like, I'm out this bitch. Like, you're not gonna talk to me like this. You're not gonna call me double slaved. You're not gonna talk about black women like this. Get the fuck out of here. Instead, you're like heartily guffawing. <laughs> Couldn't be me. Couldn't be me. They never should have been there. They never should have been hanging out with this awful man. Now y'all are associated with this. Now it's like ruined your bag. Not ruined because a bunch of people are still going to forgive them because they don't give a fuck, but... Yeah, 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 there are two of them, but also y'all could have ended the podcast and said, actually, trash this podcast. Yeah, like, I'm this is that's the problem I have. Um, obviously, they did an apology, trash. Um, I recommend go looking at um, Jesse Wu's video about it or um, ooh, I just watched it. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. Yeah, this man regularly has this humor and is a Joe Rogan regular. Protect your brand. That's what I'm not understanding. I'm like, who the fuck let y'all do this? Like Jesse Wu said the same thing. And I'm like, yeah, who let y'all do this shit? Like who was like, yeah, you should get on this podcast. Because whoever it was, they either do not give a fuck about you or they really fucking don't like you. Like, they hate you so much, they put you in a position to be, like, completely uncomfortable with a man who is going to be extremely racist and humiliate you in your face. So then they um, come out and apologize. If you know, you know. If you don't, that's fine. Um, but we just wanted to address something that's happening. But let's also just start that with, they started off with, if you know, you know. If you don't, it's fine. Y'all bitches are, did not even come to apologize for real, though. Like, can we... Can we be honest? Like, they did not come to apologize for real, for real. 
happening at the minute yep. this past weekend uh, there's been a couple of clips going around uh, from when we did a session on the flagrant podcast um, while we were on our US tour mm-hmm. and um, yeah there were a few jokes made um, that were incredibly inappropriate one specific <laughs> bro incredibly. one specifically pertaining a few jokes made that's cute brother like I said to Gabby Hanna what were the jokes I just need people to understand that racism isn't jokes. Those aren't jokes. Turn into black women. Yep. Um, and in the clip, um, Andrew was making a joke. Uh, I'm not even going to get into specifics. Making a, uh, like, frankly, like, racist joke. Yeah. And we were laughing at it. Mm-hmm. And to give, there's, there's, first of all. This, like, actually, like, the, the reality that, like, they're, like, racist jokes. I, I really need people to take that out of like <laughs> their vocabulary. Racist jokes? It's not a joke. Like he's just racist. You can make jokes about people that aren't racist. Andrew doesn't do that, but like, and y'all are just in here like some racist jokes. And look at look at him looking down. Oh. Right between the fucking play button. If y'all don't get the fuck out of here, like I'm already annoyed that they're even with the shits and gigs in the background. I'm kind of already annoyed about all of that. It's already like kind of fucking sick, but okay, let's just Um and Fight or Flight is a real thing. Like it is, yeah. Fight or flight is a real thing and it's so not easy to say, but when you're in those situations, you you look at it through a lens of like, bro, if it was me, I promise you I'll stand up, I'll kick them cameras down, yeah. I'll smack homeboy in the face, yeah. I'll say this, I'll do that. No, no. No. Fight or flight is a real thing, right? Um, but there's also two of you. I So both of y'all were like scared little lambs is what you're telling me? <laughs> both but and then you didn't you didn't flee but like so you froze <laughs> which is fine so what you're telling me is both of y'all sat there and froze neither one of y'all had any sense because listen when i'm up to shenanigans i normally have one person who goes hey this might not be a great idea and i'm like you know what you might be right <laughs> you might be right i should probably not do that I should probably just go home. So what you're telling us right now is that you two were getting burned by a racist and then you both just sat there. You both froze. Okay. Okay. But when you're in there, you're in shock. You're in shock and all you want to do is move on. Yeah, all you, bro, Literally, move on is the fucking do, word, bro. All like, you want to do is fucking move on. Just move on to the next thing. Yeah. Just move on to the next thing. There's and so like- many- But every next thing he moved on to was nightmarish. And I'm just going to say that even a frog sitting in water that is slowly boiling, at some point, like sometimes they're like, it'll boil, it'll die and whatever. But a lot of times they will still get up and leave because they'll start recognizing that it might be getting a little too hot for the little froggy ass bodies. I just can't fathom because like a big point that jesse Wu brought up is that like a lot of these male podcasts by the way i'm gonna bring my big face in here a lot of these male podcasts are propped up by women just like regular dudes like um shits and gigs the basement yard a lot of them are propped up by a predominantly female base reason being is because these are like safe men um also it's it's also because like men generally don't get pregnant and they don't really talk about their kids a lot and if you don't want any child content in any way shape or form you just uh listen to a lot of male podcasts because then you don't have to like, uh, hear about people's kids now i do watch do we know them and i do enjoy listening because when jesse talks about her baby she usually just says She's in there creating, you know, terror. It's fine. And just continues. Um, (laughs) That's the real reason. Okay? That's why. (laughs) 
Like, if I found, well, listen, I do find one of them attractive. I don't know which one is James and which one is Fuhad, but the dark chocolatey one is my favorite. Very sexy. But I knew, and here's what's really pissed me off. This is going to be too much information, but it's for your own good. It's not. It's for my own good, and I like to overshare. What's really pissed me off is that I used to be able to utilize that chocolatey man in my self-pleasuring fantasies. Now I can't because every time I'm going to see him just guffawing at being the, his friend being called a double slave, guffawing at the black girlfriend effect and black women just being tropes. How do you get off to that? And I don't have like a, sh you know, shame, kink, no problem. If you do, I just don't have that. Jesus. Fuhad. Then I am in love with, Fu well, I was in love with Fuhad. Now, puh, puh, no more. Many we times. had to say a few times, bro, just move on. Just move just on. Move on. so many different topics. We were like, move on, move on, move on. Yeah. And it's not even like about pity laughs or anything. But we, we said it a few times. To, get, get out of that get situation. Of, get, literally get out of that situation. Keep the ball rolling. And we thought it was going to be more of like a, a bros chat. Yeah, but it, just it, like, it ended yeah. up being something that's it ended up being be. something that's like. Are you dumb da dum 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 da dum 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 da dum dum dum? Are you dumb? Did you not watch anything? Like I'm a suspicious ass bitch. Like right this second, if I saw somebody in my DMs that normally wouldn't be in my DMs, I'm like, what the fuck do you want? I research everything and everybody. Like, are you trying to chat me up? Babes, I'm doing research. I'm gonna look into you. This is your job. Like, I, 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 this is your job. Just like I said about Tati, like, she, this is your job. And you jeopardize your job by not doing any fucking research. And now you come to us with this whack ass apology. Oh, bitch, please. Uh. <laughs> really, really hurt people that yeah. look to us for support and look mm. to us to feel protected. And protected is the main thing yeah. that I wanted to discuss is that it is our duty to protect you guys. Facts. Um, and cool. it is definitely not cool to be in that situation. And again, not be the ones to stand up and keep the cameras down. And I'm going to need men to realize we don't need you to resort to violence. You could have just left. That's all we're saying. Just get the fuck up and leave. Because it's very rare that you will find me in an uncomfortable situation where I stay too long. I will just leave. Like at some point I recognize like this is bad. And, and, and the fact that they were just sitting there through the whole thing. Like, I, and again, I understand you froze both of you together but it's wild that neither one of you like you are wearing shorts one of y'all could have slapped the other side to wake you the fuck up out of this mess y'all had your man thighs out like somebody slap one of them and be like let's just fucking go like because i promise you you called me double slaved to my face I am standing up. I'm not, I'm not going to fight you because what's the point in that? What does that solve? I'm just going to leave. I'm going to be like, you are fucking insane and I don't have to put up with this. Bye. Like that. It was so easy. Do I believe they are terrible people? No. Do I think they have a responsibility to have their audiences back? Yes. Yeah, so that's what some people um, stay uh, and some people won't. Yeah. Some will stay and some won't. I unsubscribed. I'm not kidding. I was, I, I was very upset because like I said at the beginning of this, I fucking knew as soon as I saw that thumbnail and I looked at it and I was just like, I don't know if I want to listen. And I had skipped it, which I normally check out almost all of theirs. Like every like collab that they do, I normally check them out because it's usually funny. Like the one, they, the two that they did with the basement yard, because I love the basement yard. I like, please listen. I'm listen, please hold on. This is, this is, I implore. I, I have to have an imploring moment. 
Frankie? Yeah. Joe? What? I need y'all to f just keep your shit together. I am not kidding. Keep your shit together. You are all that we have left. Don't fuck it up. She kisses people and they get poisoned and, and they die. Get hor but also horny, dude. She like... <sighs> and like, that's what I'm saying. Like, even if you couldn't get up for you, you know what I mean? If Even if you were just like, uh fucking awkward the next thought should be like your bag because like this is what you do as a job like this is your your job and you're apologizing very vaguely to those that you may have offended okay we fucked it on that occasion we did it's not gonna happen again and it's about being human it's about mm. realizing that you don't know what you prepared for you don't know how to prepare for something, something you don't know that you about. don't know yeah. what's gonna happen yeah and once it's happened one time you're like fuck all right you learn from your mistakes um and that's literally that's you literally, literally learn from your mistakes, yeah we man. fucked it and we're like we're sorry you we definitely you definitely do apologize it's for me like it's one of them ones where you you don't realize that like for one when you're part of a community, you don't realize that you can hurt your own community. Mm, especially wait, so wait, what the fuck do you mean? When you're part of a community, you don't realize you can hurt your own community. You, do, do. I just like had a stroke trying to like make that make sense because it doesn't make any sense. I genuinely don't get this. Like I, 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 my issue again is like, why, why were you on his show? Did y'all not vet it at all? Did y'all just accept every fucking podcast that invited you? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm so sorry. That's wild. And this comment is what really seals it for me. They need our unprotected black woman dollar. They can't take accountability. So we are going to move on. Yes, babes. I'm also, I'm moving the fuck on as well. Um, we shouldn't be surprised that they joined in with racists to laugh and demean us. Our men are treasonous. We should move accordingly. And here's the thing. Before a black man comes and, and, and starts on that bullshit, if it doesn't affect you, it's fine. We're talking, and, and I don't care. Nobody cares who you date. Just don't degrade your own women. That's all. That's all. Don't stand by while somebody degrades your women. Don't degrade them. Because, like... Please take note that the way for a long time on TikTok for like black guys in general, black men on TikTok to like go viral was to be talking shit about black women. Conversely, it was like every other race realized that the way to make it to go viral was not only to talk shit about women, but also they found out Oh, if you say you like black women, you can get a big audience. So apparently the internet is run by black women is what we're <laughs> at right now. Everybody just uses us for their gain. And I'm still broke, bitch. I'm pissed. But like, uh, somebody even said, do your homework, boys. You were not ready. That's why you English laughed in the face of disrespect. I get it. Never let it happen again. Somebody was just like, you know, do your thing. Um, we have a, a definitely unsubscribed sick of black men and their excuses for letting black women get attacked and they here they come i don't shouldn't have to protect someone i don't know that's such a weird thing to say because we all will try to protect people we don't know in multiple circumstances that's like saying well i don't know this person who fell on the fucking train tracks and since that i don't know them i'm not about to take any risk to try to help them fuck them <laughs> i don't care who they date i do care that they can't acknowledge their self-hate that part they also tend to treat black women in non-romantic context terribly as well. Yep. So it's just, it's, it, it, to me, it's just like, if you can, if you can date your preference comfortably and be comfortable with yourself and be comfortable with everyone else around you, nobody gives a shit. Enjoy yourself. But what we're all tired of is like, I'm just like mad disappointed because, you know, they've ruined my Mondays, you know, now I can't have, you know, basement yard shits and kids back to back party. Also, do we know them? It was like a sandwich. It was shits and gigs. Do we know them? Basement yard. That gave me approximately three hours to three and a half hour block 
while I got my route ready every morning. Now it's just two to two and a half and I'm annoyed. Jesse, Lily, I'm gonna need y'all to make your um, videos longer. Thank you. I need y'all, I need bo basement yard. Jesse, I need all y'all to add about 30 more minutes to your shit. Ugh, no. This this is another whack ass apology where they're like, when, when you're not, yeah, when, yeah. when unintentionally. Unintentionally for real, and yeah. And also on, on top of that, it was so crazy that like the narrative that's been spun about how we feel about our community, mm. the irony of the fact that whilst the whole reason we're in that country was to just show how much we love yeah. our community yeah. and show how much we love our supporters and yeah. how much time we spent at the shows and just like getting to know people mm -hmm. and just like understanding our community better and just like making friends and making bonds and showing yeah. love and they're showing love. And this whole six week trip was just about I really hate it when people say the narrative that's spun when we have like literal video evidence. Bitch, what do you mean? Nothing had to be spun. We watched y'all laugh. What the fuck do you mean? What narrative? We watched y'all get dogged the fuck out. We watched you get called a double slave, James. Showing how much we love our community yeah, and how much our community show them. up, yeah. show out for us. And then <sighs> to have that exact same trip be the reason that we're having to, to have this conversation now. Um, but at the end of the day, my word of the year is discernment because you didn't practice it. Hope you learned your lesson or whatever. To everybody who wants to forgive them, enjoy yourself. Nobody's, nobody can tell you what the fuck to do. Don't run around trying to like yell at everybody. Be like, blah, blah, blah. It's, just, it's not even really a dissertation. Like, I just don't care. Like, y'all could have left. That's all. Like, y'all could have got your little goofy asses up. It really wouldn't have hurt nothing for you to get up and leave. Cause I would have, you know what I mean? I just leave. I've left multiple situations. The thing is that this apology is so casual, so half-assed, which goes to show that's how hard you are, you are um, willing to apologize to your community. Yeah, cause like Jesse, we brought up that a lot of people don't know how to apologize and I don't believe that. And I know internet apologies are weird, but I'm getting to the point where I'm just like, y'all just need to stop fucking apologizing cause y'all don't ever address anything. So it's not even an apology. Like y'all just come out and be like, so some of you, and this isn't just them, this is everybody, they're like, so some of you might know, some of you might not, but I just wanted to apologize for that one thing that I did one time if it offended you. And I'm really gonna do better moving forward. That's literally all of the apologies now. Like it doesn't feel like they even got a script together with this. I feel like they just kind of sat there and like, yeah, no, and like, the, yeah, and it's very, very weird. shock, shock, fight or flight, fight, fight or flight. Yeah, 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 mmm. So we, this isn't a good time to mmm, Fuad. <laughs> this isn't this isn't the time for what you're like mm. um i hope they learn from it i won't know because i am unsubscribed um which is sad because like that was just the space that i went that they, they used to really help me through my work days um because like i very specifically choose long form content because i'm outside and i'm working for you know i think my outs my outside time on my route is at least six hours every day and so I enjoy having the content to listen to while I'm getting ready for route, while I'm on route. I'm going to miss you boys. <sighs> the, the Jameson Fuhad situation has gotten worse. And what I want to say first and foremost about that, if you don't know who Jameson Fuhad are, shits and gigs. And it's gotten worse. And I just want to say, this is what happens. This is what happens when you try so hard to assimilate and be a part of things that you shouldn't be a part of. The leopard eats your face. I believe Kiara on the last stream had said, um, Andrew's gonna be fine. And of course he is, he's gonna be perfectly fine. Nothing bad is gonna happen to him. And now you have white men in here and you know it's gone left when you have non-white people being like, what the fuck are y'all doing? <laughs> What are y'all doing <laughs> when you have white people coming in and just being like, I bruv, <laughs> mistakes are made. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a second. I am going to bring this up because it's muy importante for me to show y'all like what is really happening. Um, and we'll get into it a little bit more because there really is like a, a very particular portion in which I'm going to say, <laughs> well, we'll get there. But first, I said the non-whites are, are, are coming in. Let me just... So shoot. Andrew Schultz and these two black men go on an Andrew Schultz podcast making fun of black women saying that they're the hardest today because they never shut the fuck up and they always argue. So let me ask you one question, guys. 
Why is it when it's a white wife with a black husband is twice the divorce rate when it's compared to a white marriage, but when it's a black wife with a white man is 44% less chance of a divorce? Hmm, maybe black women ain't the fucking problem. And maybe you need to turn around and look yourself in the fucking mirror and realize you got mommy issues and you hate black women. Or maybe you just need to go party with P. Diddy because you clearly don't like women. Now, my name's Eric Stone. I will say. So Andrew Schultz and he's too black. Let me just say, I don't love the P. Diddy reference at the end because for fuck's sake, that man is a monster. Don't do that. Eric, you had me until the end. You had me in the first 99%. That last 1%, I was like, sir, <laughs> mind your business now. But the fact that we've gotten here, that two black men who, I'm going to say, the majority of black women watching, black women and femmes who are watching them, were completely aware the lawn people must be here because Bo's barking. Um, the majority of black women and femmes who were watching them knew they didn't date black women, knew they didn't fuck with black women like that. They knew that and they were okay. They're like, it's fine because you don't treat us poorly. You're treating us with respect. We're like, yes, come on Kings. We could have our little fantasies. We could have our good times. We could laugh. We could joke. We could key key. And then when this happened, it's not just about um, them not defending black women, because I think that that's a point of view that people keep taking. It's not just about that, although that's a big part of it. It's about the fact that he sat there and let himself be called double slaved and still didn't do shit. It's the fact that these two men, two, two count them, and I keep saying this, two of them sat there and allowed this to happen. And they keep, their apology was trash. And like now, Andrew Schultz has come out, whether it's true or not, because that's not what matters. It doesn't matter. Watched their apology video and proceeded to say that they asked for things to be cut out, but not these things that, that were put on, uh, on out for the world, right? So now, as Kiara said, Andrew's going to be fine. But James and Fuhad are eating shit. And this is why I'm like, you cannot allow yourself to want that assimilation so bad that you will allow anything that you, you know, like, it's just, it's, I can't, I literally, like, I'm just sitting here. Like, I don't understand why, how y'all got in this situation. I don't understand why you were on that podcast. Cause like I said previously, like if I walked in, I saw a man with that kind of haircut, I'm just turning around and walking back out. There's no reason for me to be here. <laughs> that proud boy haircut would tell me everything I need to know. I'd be like, you know what? Maybe we made a mistake and I would just leave. Like, it's not a problem just leave like why am I gonna stay here and like let this happen and you know again it's just it's sad because they they were our our safe space the first time I watched Naruto yeah I moved my blanket into my mum's living room mm -hmm. uber be having you outside looking like a prostitute <laughs> walking up to the car like James <laughs> That's so fat. Fuck, bro, it's jarring. So no men for a day. Ladies, what do you do? Sleep peacefully without all that twitch. <laughs> because there's very few male spaces that women are in, women and femmes. And I, I will say this too, like somebody else brought up uh, in a comment section that, and I don't know, I can't find it because I don't remember where I saw it. I watch way, way too much YouTube and TikTok and all of that to like know where I got it from. But somebody else had mentioned that a big, I think it was probably a child-free place, but I'm not sure. But somebody else had mentioned that the reason so many women and femmes support male, male podcasts is because they don't talk about their children. <laughs> And we don't want to hear that shit. We just want to like have fun and kiki. Well, first and foremost, they think they're better than Americans to begin with. Those kind of black people always have negative things to say about us. Yes, because like the fact that they thought that there was nobody paying in Atlanta, black Mecca. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Like that is where like every black person who wants to see black baddies, like just in succession, it's Atlanta. They know. They know to go there. They're like, oh, I got to get to Atlanta because that's where all the black baddies are. And they were just like, eh, 
And like we, but the thing is, we knew that. We knew that, and it, it's okay. You know, nobody cares. And I feel like so many people, especially black men who are the holler and hit dogs, um, who are trying to argue about this, be like, who cares? You're like, y'all are just mad. And it's like, no, listen, date who you want. Date your preference all you want to, but you don't have to put the other side down. That's, that's the point. Like if I were to date a white person, and their response as to why they didn't date black or white women for whatever reason or white people for whatever reason was putting them down and being like, oh, well, you know, white people will be racist. I'm like, oh, well, not all of them. You got to relax. Um, oh, well, they don't they don't put any seasoning on their food. I'm like, OK, you're getting weird. Like, I don't trust people who don't like their own people. Like every time I see there are a few places where when I see a fine ass black woman, I'm like, Texas, Atlanta. <laughs> Not saying that the East Coast doesn't have, but because of where I'm located, a lot of my TikTok feed and whatnot is going to show me like Southern black women. And when I tell you that I'm like literally losing my mind half the time, being like, girl, if you don't, if you don't, whew, you making me act up, you making me act wrong oh god <laughs> please send help i'm on fire literally but like it's just sad it's it's become it's sad because they had their bag and they were doing so well and then they just fucked it all up over some uh, oh, not dumb shit over some shit that they should because again it, it it boggles my mind that he sat there and let him call him double slaved and didn't get up because maybe i promise you i'm getting up and that's not even a hindsight is 2020. Like I have been in situations where somebody has said some weird, wild, off the wall shit to me. And I have literally looked them in the face and responded. Like I was at a bar one time, this white guy was sitting next to me, sloshed, sloshed. And was just like, Ugh, girls with tattoos have daddy issues. Now, mind you, this is the winter. So I'm wearing a jacket or long sleeves or something. I turn and look at him because I can see that he's trying to hit on me, but I don't care because he's not cute and he's really drunk. So both of those things are out for me. This was several years ago. So I just pull my sleeve up. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah? And he's just like, oh. <clears throat> so don't, don't do the thing where you go like, oh, it's so easy to hide. No, no, no. Because the thing about being in your own power and settled in yourself is you don't stand for anybody treating you like shit. Anybody. It doesn't matter who. You just you just don't stand for it. You're like, absolutely not. That's not going to happen. And then he got nervous and farted. And then I was like, did you just fart, bro? And he was like, yeah, sorry. And it was on a wooden chair, so it splatted. It was disgusting. I was just like, bro, like, maybe you should go home. Thanks. And I think that they sent for his dad to come pick his drunk ass up from the bar. This is also what happens when black men align themselves with white men of his caliber. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Because like you said, Andrew, Andrew will be fine at the end of the day. They, however, are losing supporters every single minute. Yeah. Every single minute, they're like losing everything that they built. How are you going to work so hard to build a platform? To have the cult babies and all of this stuff, have a huge Patreon, have all of these people supporting you. And you just turned it on its head by being idiots. Like research, simple, re like a simple Google search would have helped you out. Literally, all you had to do was see his face and be like, you know what? I think we shouldn't do that. Yes. Yeah. Girls. Right. Before we get into today's episode, uh, guys, Let's, yeah. girls. right. Before we get into today's episode, mm -hmm. uh, quick PSA, quick acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. um, so if you know, you know, if you don't, that's fine. Um, but we just wanted to address something that's happening at the minute yep. this past weekend uh, there's been a couple of clips going around uh, from when we did a session on the flagrant podcast and um, while we were on our us tour mm -hmm. and um yeah there were a few jokes made um that were incredibly inappropriate one specific <laughs> bro incredibly. one specifically pertaining to black women yep. um, yeah and in the clip, don't, um, don't. Andrew was making a joke. And look at how Andrew's just like, <sighs> and all his little cronies. And see, see these, these, these gentlemen here, like, look at this. 
Like, again, this is how these kinds of people are allowed to, like, be racist piece of shits because they always have people to co-sign their shitty racism because they get in a check. And so they just don't care at some point. And, you know, live your life however you want to. I can't tell anybody how to live. They don't care because they're getting a check. You know, and I've, I've been guilty of saying multiple times, like, if y'all see me hanging out with Jeffree Star, mind your business. Just know I'm getting paid and my house is now paid off and I don't have to work for the post office anymore, which is starting to give me, like, mad panic attacks. So, like... <laughs> mind your business but just say so just like go somewhere and say so for real uh, i'm not even gonna get into specifics don't Making don't a, you uh, like, get in frankly like racist joke yeah and <sighs> we were laughing at it me and incredulity me racist with my proud boy haircut and my hitler moustache like it's not hitler but it's more like stalin but anyways let's move on and to give, there's, there's, first of all, before we get into like specifics or anything like that, obviously there's just literally no excuse. Guys, yeah. girls. Right, before so then there's that. Okay, and there's like, there's apparently multiple parts. So I'm, listen, we're going to get into part two because this, this is, they're getting embarrassed. <laughs> no excuse for yeah. that. I just want to take in the beginning of it. There is no excuse for jokes. <laughs> there is never an excuse for making jokes. But can we try? I'm not gonna ever make an excuse. He doesn't make jokes, by the way. I'm just sitting here in the comedian. darkness. There is never an excuse for making skin glowing. Bitch, look at me glowing. Like I don't even, I, cause I can't turn on the lights. It's too early in the day. And also my eyes just really can't handle it. So I'm just sitting here looking gorgeous in the dark. Bo, are you done barking at the lawn guys? Because they're done with you. Making jokes, yeah. okay? Uh, that is a real statement <laughs> said by a man. <laughs> I just want that to be clear. There is never an excuse for making jokes with the boys. Go on, go on. Let's take it serious. Look at, but look at, look at how sad he is. Also, to be ageist, um, this man is forty something years old. Like he's a grown ass man doing this shit. I'm talking about Andrew. Like what? These are his jokes. These are the same. Like a lot of the jokes he was telling, I was like, I heard that shit in 1997. Like get some new material, you loser. Um, <laughs> It's over on the left. Like, it is, yeah. <laughs> fight or fight is a real thing. He is. So do you see how? Say, we should go back. To we should go back because he's going through it right now. Look look how he practiced this. Let me I'm gonna pick my skin off. I love you finger. guys. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Well, I need you to watch him. Look, he's biting his bottom lip. Like, oh, fuck, excuse. man. There is no excuse. Ooh. Um, oh, oof. And fight or flight is a real thing like it is yeah fight or flight is a real thing and it's so not easy to say but it, when you're in those situations you you look at it through a lens of like bro if it was me i promise you i'll stand up i'll kick them cameras down yeah. i'll smack homeboy in the face yeah i'll say this i'll do that but when you're in there you're in shock you're in shock and all you want to do is move on yeah all you, bro, move you, all on is the i've i've been there and that's what i'm saying like he's literally making fun of them in front of them now and they still not gonna check him period they're all going to sit there and be like, <laughs> you know, Heather, you know exactly why that sound exists. <laughs> I know. I know what that's like when you're just having fun and laughing with the boys. and You're like, I just can't wait to move on from that. <laughs> I, don't you know that feeling when you experience the fight or flight and then you just laugh? <laughs> Does that happen to you guys when your body is just being torn with the primal urge to either fight or flight and instead you just go, ha <laughs> And I just want to say, this is why they should have been very specific in their apology. They should have crafted a well-written apology. Yes. Yes, you should draft and read an apology. Don't just be coming up off the cuff because that's what, that's why you got that bullshit with like, yeah. And, um, yeah, it, it was bro. Like, that's why you got a bunch of, and, um, staring at the floor, like dead, because they were just off the cuff apologizing. This is why you had to be specific because since y'all chose to act all like, Nobody knew because you started this off with, if you know, you know, if you don't, you don't mistake there mistake. Number one, because here was the fun part. The people who didn't know period. <laughs> Hi Mike. The people who didn't know are now going to go see, search it out because your dumb asses did not, you weren't specific in saying, listen, a month ago, we did a podcast with Andrew Schultz. We were on our American tour 
And unfortunately, we did not do the things we needed to do to make sure that this was a space that we should even be in. When we got there, it seemed like it was gonna be cool, but as filming continued, it got more and more racist and we were very uncomfortable. We started to get nervous and we weren't sure what to do because we've never been in a situation like this before. It's different from when you're young and you can just hit somebody. Um, and it's different when it's not your job. And we got overly nervous. We got overly scared. We felt like we couldn't just get up and leave. We weren't sure what the protocol was because as far as we had been doing in all of our American tour, nothing like this had ever happened. Like, I just came up with that. I just came up with that. I'm fucking smart. Anyways, um, but it's just wild to me that they are now getting eaten the fuck up. Mike, I added so many different little, cause I started, I use, I've started using trigger fire and I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. So I've added all these stupid little things cause I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm a fun idiot. I'm a sexy idiot. I'm a beautiful skin, brown skinned idiot. Cause apparently I'm not dark skinned. I thought I was dark skinned, but um, I've been informed. I mean, parts of me are dark skinned. <laughs> You ain't seen parts of my arms and parts of my legs. Okay, moving forward. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys ever have that feeling? I feel like you're making an excuse for jokes. I'm not, yeah. I would never. That sounds like what you're doing. Hey, I would never excuse taking two things that have. <laughs> Sorry. Pause. No excuse yeah. for that. I just want to take in the. So now we've gotten them laughing at their face. The thing is they wouldn't ever make a draft like that because they aren't actually sorry. They're they're sorry that black women caught on to them being assholes right along with Andrew. Yeah, because here's the thing. People can, the reality is it doesn't matter whether or not um, Andrew Schultz is racist. That's our truth. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if he's racist, okay? Because it still falls on them. Because here he is, his career is going to be fine. Everything's going to be great. He's going to keep rocking and rolling. In fact, his profile is probably going to rise because of this, because he managed Hello, to humiliate. Hi, Hello, motherfucker. He managed to humiliate and embarrass black men. And he managed to ha like have them sit there and swallow all this bullshit and look dumb as fuck. So like now they're just sitting there looking dumb. And I don't know if y'all know this, but normally their episodes go up on Monday. So what are they going to do now? Because, like, again, a specific apology, when he came out with all of this shit, y'all would, would at least be able to prove and, and show that you had apologized for these specific things and how you acted like that. He would have a lot harder time embarrassing the fuck out of you even further. This, this man and his crew has humiliated y'all to the point that, like, even, like, people can't support you. You may as well have licked his shoes. You're not going anywhere. But what you have done, and this is hopefully the learning moment, is that you have empowered those people that are trying to cancel you. Remember, the people trying to cancel you get off on you being canceled. You having to come out and apologize and bend to their whim and change the... <sighs> Once again, let me just... Class is in session. Cancellation doesn't work the way that people like him think that it works okay you do in fact get canceled and when I say that what I mean is the majority of your support has left you have a core who's going to continue watching and supporting you but you stop showing up on the recommended pages especially for people who didn't subscribe to you and were just relying on you showing up on their recommended every Monday because they do watch you, you're gonna stop showing up there. The cancellation isn't that you disappear from the internet. The cancellation is that you wind up like Jeffree Star sitting on TikTok using Pookie incorrectly while bullying teenagers. That's the cancellation. It's that what you used to have, where you used to post and people were like, bam, bam, bam. Everybody was there. People were like, oh yeah, I love you. Like, you're so great. Da, 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 da. That, that's what happens. Like that's, <laughs> the point is that you no longer have the power and pull you once had. And you're right, he's not wrong. He's not wrong though, but it only works for white men, period. Like again, he's gonna be completely fine. 
Andrew Schultz is gonna just keep making his shit. And like I said before, his profile is gonna rise. And y'all's is just continuing, continuing to drop because this man is, is and continues to use your embarrassment, your humiliation for his gain. The disposition of who you are, and it is a change, right? Because you had the ability to edit it out. You chose not to edit it out. Didn't mean anything to you to that. You only want to edit it, or you only want to talk about it now because of the negative reaction. If nobody reacted to it, you wouldn't go back and be like, we feel horrible and we have to protect our community and all this other bullshit you're saying. The learning lesson here is you do not apologize because you're just going to empower these people who aren't even part of your community in the first. You're not going anywhere. But what you have done. And that's and the last thing the moment, is that, that I wanted to show. Andrew Schultz calling y'all out, the racist man being like, y'all didn't care about this at the time. Now you do because people found it. Embarrassing. 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 And the thing is, I can't kiki anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I can't kiki. And I'm very annoyed. There's no kikiing for me. There's no ha ha ha. There's no ya ya ya. There's no, <laughs> there's no guffaws. There's no giggles. There's no chortles. There's no chuckles. There's no snickers. Like I can't do any of that shit anymore. So, you know, James Fuhad, it was fun while it lasted. And once again, I implore you, I implore you, I implore you. Uno mas tiempo. Basement yard, my basement boys. Um, I implore you one more time, basement yard, Frankie, Joe, don't fuck this up. What the hell is a cashew? Shh, a nut. It's not a nut, though. Once again, you're all we have left. Are you gonna make? Are you? Are you pranking? Are you pranking? No, I think so. I think walnuts are nuts. I think tree nut. You know, is a cashew a nut? Y'all need to recognize whether you know this or not. Y'all have a large black female audience. Women and femmes are watching y'all. We love you. It's fun. It's funny. Okay? Don't ruin it for us, okay? And Frankie, I feel the same way that you do about Red Lobster. All right, that is it. <laughs> <laughs>